In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a financial advisor sales script. Now for this, what I've done is I've gone through our sales message brainstorming process for the product of financial advisory services. Now full disclosure, I've never sold financial advisory services, but what I have done is gone through this process with a sales script or customer that is a financial advisor. And going through this process helped us to create all of these talking points and all of these questions. Now I just wanna let you know, this is not gonna be a real exciting video. If you are a financial advisor, you will likely find this interesting and what I show you here helpful and probably some new ideas that you haven't thought of before. But if you're not a financial advisor, you might find this video to be completely boring unless you're trying to understand this process and go through it for your own product or service. That being said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of these steps and show you what I came up with and show you what a salesperson can say in each of these areas. And the process starts with brainstorming the key details around what you sell. And like I said, the product we're talking about here is financial advisory services. And what I recommend you do is always think of what you sell, whether it's a product or a service, as being a box and try to think about everything that's in that box that your client or your customer will get. So when you sell a service, what are all the different things you'll do for that client? And here's a list of features or the different things that I came up with with this financial advisor. Financial planning, investment advice, retirement planning, portfolio management, a financial needs assessment. And after you outline what you provide, Take that one step further and think about how what you provide is different from your competition. How are you different from other financial advisors? And this can be difficult, especially if you are a financial advisor because a lot of what you do is very similar to other financial advisors. Here are some things that I came up with with this client. Although your differentiation will likely be completely different, we're completely independent and not affiliated with any financial institutions. Our fee structure is very transparent and you will see exactly what you're paying for, and we provide active management of your investments and your savings. And the next step in the process is to try to think about who is the audience for this sales script or who are we going to be communicating with when we're using this sales pitch. Now, this is an optional step. You could certainly skip this, but when you're selling B2B, this can definitely impact everything you say. And some different things to think about when you're thinking about the target audience is you might be able to sell your services to different industries, different size of businesses, different departments in an organization when selling B2B, different titles and an organization again when selling B2B. But where I recommend you start, and this probably fits applies to selling financial advisory services, is you can use a broad label for the audience that you're communicating with, such as businesses or individuals or people. And for this sales script, we created this targeting individuals. But here's an example why this step is important, is that a financial advisor could likely sell his or her services to a business and become the financial advisor for their employees. That would be a totally different sales script than what I'm gonna show you here. And that's a good example of how this step can impact everything we talk about after this step. And the next step in the process is to think about when we sell this service to that target audience, what is the value that we have to offer? And what we're talking about here is what are the improvements that we can deliver to our customer or to our client? And this can be a difficult thing to get your hands around, especially when you feel like you sell somewhat of a commoditized service like financial advisory services. But all we're trying to do here is think of between three to six different improvements that we can provide for this target audience. And here's a checklist that you can use as a tool to help you get ideas for how your product or service might be able to help your target audience. And the first area is, does what you sell help to make something work better, help to make something easier, help to decrease the time it takes to do something, help to increase revenue or income for your target buyer, help to decrease their costs or expenses, help to improve the product that they sell, help to decrease the risk of something bad happening, help to improve visibility or access to information. And so what I recommend you do is go through this list to think of, do I help in any of these ways? And here's something that you can do to help is you can actually bring back all of the different features of what your product does or what you'll do with the service that you sell. And you can even bring back the differentiation and you can think about each of these items and compare it 
against these different areas to see if any of those create improvements in any of these areas. And when you're going through that step, you definitely want to keep in mind the target audience that you're creating a script for that you're going to be communicating with. Because as you can see, when we're going through this list, thinking about individuals, we might think of different things than we would identify than if we were creating a pitch or a script for businesses. But going through this list, we came up with this set of improvements. We help individuals to improve their investment planning and strategy, maximize the return for their investments, improve their decision making regarding investing, increase personal wealth, establish true financial freedom, minimize their exposure to taxes, become more educated regarding their personal finance options and decisions, decrease the amount of financial stress in their life, improve their quality of life, and work-life balance. And the next step in the process is to think about the pain that you can make go away or that you can decrease with your product or service. And what we're trying to do here is think of between three to six different challenges or concerns that your product can address for your target buyer and get that into your sales message. And you might be able to think of a few pain points that you can address, but put that to the side because here's a trick. What we can do is we can bring back the improvements that we just came up with because for each improvement, there's an opposite problem that's resolved. And what we can do is we can look at each improvement and think, what is the opposite of that improvement? Or what problem goes away when we create that improvement? Or what problem starts to happen if this improvement is not provided? And when you're asking these questions, you still want to keep in mind the target audience that you're creating this script for because the pain points could be different depending on the target audience. The pain points will be different for individuals than they would be selling financial advisory services to businesses. So going through our list of improvements one at a time, we came up with this set of challenges or concerns or pain points that individuals might be concerned that their investments are not delivering the desired level of returns, don't have a good plan or strategy for investing, can be difficult to know what to do with their money and when investing, not happy with the amount of personal wealth they've accrued, paying more taxes than they should be, don't have enough financial reserves, not fully able to enjoy life and working too much, a lot of stress related to finances, don't have knowledge or education in the area of investing and personal finances, difficult to achieve financial freedom, not able to fully enjoy life, not fully protected in the event of something unexpected happening. And the next step in the process is to identify good questions to ask. I personally believe the best salesperson is the one that asks the best questions. You may agree with that 100%, but still not know what question to ask. This process that I'm going to show you right here will help you to create an optimum list of questions to ask. And we start with creating pain questions. These are questions that probe to see if the prospect has the pain that you can help make go away. And to help create our list of pain questions, what we can do is we can bring back the pain points that we just came up with because for each pain point that you help to solve, there's a question or two that you can ask. So what we can do is we can look at each pain point and ask ourselves, what question could we ask to see if the prospect has that challenge or concern? And we still want to keep in mind the target audience of individuals for when we're creating these questions because that might change the question that we ask. And so going through our pain points one at a time, we came up with this list of pain questions. How do you feel about the money you have invested and the return you're getting? How do you feel about your current plan and strategy for personal investments? Do you currently have a plan or strategy? Do you feel like you know what to do regarding your investments? How do you feel about your knowledge regarding investing and managing your money? Are you aware of the different investment options that are available to you? Do you feel like you're on the path to financial independence? Do you feel like you are protected financially if something unexpected were to happen? How confident are you that you've minimized your tax exposure? Do you feel like you have the right amount of financial reserves? Do you think your level of stress regarding finances is normal or above average? Does your financial health get in the way of you enjoying life? How often do you think about trying to improve your quality of life or work-life balance? So those are what we refer to as pain questions. We also recommend you create what we refer to as current state questions. These are questions that you should ask that identify what the prospect is doing in the area where you have something to sell. So if you sold cars, you would ask current state questions of, do you have a car today? What year is it? How is it running? 
How many miles does it have? Do you own it? Do you lease it? And so on. Now for each product or service, there are a unique set of current state questions. So I can't tell every salesperson what current state questions they should ask, but what I have created is a guide to use to think of good current state questions to ask. For example, you should ask if the prospect currently has what you sell, who they bought from, any details around their current systems or processes, people in the organization, current contracts and expiration dates, any sizing details, maybe current performance or stats the last time they looked at purchasing what you sell. And again, we wanna keep in mind the target audience of individuals. So going through that list, here are some current state questions for financial advisory services. Are you currently working with a financial advisor? How long have you been working with them? How's everything going? If they are working with someone, how long have you been working with them? How's it going? How do you feel about the return they've been delivering to you? Do you currently have a retirement savings plan? How happy are you with the return that you're currently seeing on your investments? and savings? When was the last time you considered making changes to improve your financial planning? How much are you putting away for your retirement? How old are you? When do you plan to retire? How many family members do you have? How much do you currently have set aside for your retirement? How much are you putting away each month for your retirement? All right, so I won't say that that is a complete list of all the different questions you should ask, and I won't say that those questions are perfect, but those sets of questions should give you some new ideas or maybe new questions to add to what you're currently doing today. And the next step in the process is to think about a customer example to share in our sales script. And so here are four questions that you could answer and use what you come up with to create a very short, concise, customer example that you can use in a lot of different ways in your sales script. You can use when you're talking directly to prospects, you could use it in a voicemail, an email. But the first question is to identify a particular customer that you worked with. Then think of maybe a problem that they had before they started working with you. Maybe what you sold them to decrease that problem or make that problem go away. And then try to think of two different improvements that you helped to deliver to this customer. And with this step, again, you still wanna keep in mind the target audience. What would be ideal with this customer example is that you think of a past or current customer that is similar to the target audience. So this audience is individuals, so you'd wanna think of an example for an individual that you helped. And if you were creating a sales script for businesses, then you might wanna think of a business that you helped. But going through these steps, we worked with a small business owner and they were not happy with their personal retirement planning. We help to improve that by building a plan and strategy for their retirement and their savings. And this helped them to improve their knowledge and decision-making regarding their investments and also help them to decrease their tax exposure. So again, that customer example is gonna be different for you. And again, so going through each of those steps helped us to create all of these individual talking points and questions. And I'm not gonna say that all of this is perfect and that you should use all of this exactly, but the process that we went through is a process you can go through to create your own sales script, and hopefully you can get some ideas from what I showed you here today. But each of these steps gives us these sets of bullet points, and each of those sets of bullet points used to create what we refer to as building blocks. And you can mix and match those building blocks to create a lot of different sales scripts and sales tools. You can use those to create a cold call script, you could use those same blocks to create an appointment script. You can use those blocks to create an email campaign, voicemail messages, objection responses, and a whole lot more. And I'm actually not gonna show you what each of those individual documents and scripts looks like in this video for a couple reasons. First of all, I want this video to be relatively short and it would be very long if I showed you all of those different documents, but also because I've already shown all of the different documents that you can create from the different combinations of building blocks in another video, and you can watch that video to see all of those different documents. And I'll put a link to that video in the description, but it's on our YouTube channel. Go to the playlist, The Smart Sales System, video for writing sales scripts will take you to that video. But that concept of creating these blocks and then mixing and matching these blocks to create a lot of different documents is actually how our software application, Sales Scripter, works. The software of Sales Scripter has this sales message builder, which is that exact same process that I just showed you of brainstorming the value 
for what you sell, the pain points, the questions. And once you get all of your answers and bullet points in the software, the software then provides a sales playbook, which is a library of documents. You get a whole folder of sales scripts and email templates and more. And these are all the different documents that you can create with the different combinations of building blocks. And so here's a sales script, a cold call script, and this is filled in with the script that I just showed you, financial advisory services. And here is the opening to a cold call. The reason for the call is we help individuals to improve their investment planning and strategy and help them maximize the return for their investments. So you have your full script here with your pain questions, your current state questions, your pain points. And then over here, you have your objection responses because we can use those same building blocks as responses to our objections. They say, I'm not interested. Oh, I understand if I could ask you real quick, how do you feel about the amount of money you've invested and the return you're getting? We can also use those building blocks for voicemail scripts and those are down here as well. Now, if you actually are a financial advisor and you want this sales script, this is actually all loaded up in our preloaded messages library. What we've done is we've gone through our sales message builder process for many commonly sold products. And those are all loaded up here. All of the answers, all of the benefits and pain points and questions for all of these different products is loaded up here. And what you see here is financial advisory services. And all you have to do is click select. And then your account is loaded up with that sales message that I just showed you. All of those benefits, pain points, and questions. And when you're loaded up with that sales message, then you will immediately get a full library of sales scripts and emails and voicemails for that particular service, in this case, for financial advisory services. So I hope that video gives you some ideas for your sales script. If you want more information or tips, the best place to go is salescriptor.com. Thanks for being here, and we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great day. Take care. Bye.